Pink Dragon. So I'm here to start a new vlog. So if you don't know and you don't follow Brittany from Brittany Loves Reading, I will link her below. She plays a TBR game every single year, every single month based on Timmy's, but I'm in her Patreon. I think it's called Lana Fairy Tales because I love Brittany. She's great. We actually did a collab, like a buddy read earlier this summer, and I really hope we can get you to another one. She's really, really cool. Um, so I am part of her Patreon, and honestly, I've been traveling. <laughs> so I don't know if this was supposed to happen last week or if I'm actually on time for something, but I'm going to do the next couple of days, I'm going to do her game, which has this nice pretty bingo board it has all these cards again she's from canada so a lot of these are based on tim horton which is a coffee shop where she lives i think i've seen tim horton's like once so but i because i'm kind of focusing on my ala reads this month and next month specifically because I, what happens was i go to ala and i never read the book so i'm trying to be a little bit more specific so what i'm going to do is i'm going to kind of roll a dice maybe do three books for this vlog i'm not currently listening well i am listening to an audiobook but it's not going to be in this vlog it's going to be in another one um but yeah so let's just roll Ooh, okay a six i rolled a six out of dice i don't know if that's how she did it but that's how i did it one two three four wait hold on. i'm going the wrong way uh okay one two three four five six okay so I am right here. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, I will show you where I am. And then I'm going to try to. Oh, dear. Right, and then I will show you. So, I am. I'm right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, I'm right there, which is good. Um, and I'm going to try. Whoa. To remember where I am so next time I don't forget <laughs> all right so we have to choose this little cup this is little things and I'm just kind of they're random so I hope I get a good one all right Ooh, read a book with a light source on the cover oh that one is actually one I had to do for the amazing readathon and I was struggling but I think I'm gonna look what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go look on my immediate TBR like the books that I plan to read this month and see if any of these have like a light source on the cover and if they do then I'll probably read that and if not we'll go into the endless bag of books like the box of books that like I just got but I'm gonna kind of pick my TBR first just because those are the books I was planning on reading anyway, so let me go see them. It has a light switch on the cover. I'll be, right, I'll be right back. I think I'm gonna pick up the book that I was really excited for. I think I'm gonna pick up The Teller of Small Fortunes by Julie Leong. This comes out in November. It is a cozy fantasy. There is a lot of light sources. There is a light source over here. There's a light source over here. There's a light source over here. And there's light sources in the building. So I'm gonna pick this one up. It's a cozy fantasy. Um, I also think I'm gonna stick with the boys and watch one season of the boys um, and try to catch up on YouTube today. I took a I think I took a bit of a workout break because I hurt my knee. It still hurts, but it doesn't hurt that bad. I'm also listening to Isles of the Gods by Amy Kaufman. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna talk about it in this vlog or not, but I am listening to it. I just listened to the first um chapter like the first couple of chapters for the re for, for the read along with pub dates um so yeah that's what i'm listening to but i'm gonna go start this i'm gonna go rewatch start the boys again and yeah i am gonna give this book a start so i'm gonna go read the first 65 pages and then i'll give you guys an update bye hey fun dragons i'm back i just want to do a quick update i did wind up sitting down and watching a bit more of the boys um i've also trying to catch up on my youtube queue because past couple of weeks I'm like 200 videos behind and I hate being that behind so I wound up reading about 65 pages in A Teller of Small Fortunes by Julie Leon this just come out in November so I'm giving you a bit of a sneak peek of this book but I'm really liking it so far you basically follow this character named Tao and she's an immigrant for a fortune teller well she's I think the main character said she was Chinese descent um, so in the society, she's like a, she's, she's a fortune teller, but she's, smells, tells small fortune. She's not like a seer. She doesn't see big things. And she winds up going on, a, like, 
you know, taking her cart. It kind of reminds me of when I read Brood and Magic because that's kind of how that character was. She kind of went from place to place um, and she winds up going to all of these little scenes and she winds up like telling small fortunes um, and she winds up coming across two like I would say one's like a bard I would say and one's like looking for his daughter and she kind of does a small fortune that kind of gives him a clue as like that he is gonna see his daughter again and then they go to another little town and they run, come up with a baker and I'm just really having a fun time with it it's so cozy and just so like nice it also does focus a lot on like family she's very like she's like very isolated from her family she doesn't have a lot of contact with her family and I'm just like really really liking it I think I'm gonna take a bit of a physical reading break I have a little bit of a headache um that always happens when I have soda the, like the previous day I get a headache the next day which means I should probably just stop drinking soda um but my goal is to read another 100 pages of this to get up to 100 but I also want to listen to a little bit of Isles of the Gods by Amy Kaufman for um uh, my other vlog I'm doing because um I want to really catch up on podcasts, and this is the podcast that I'm the most behind on, so I need to do that. So yeah, I'm going to go read, I'm going to go do a little bit of diamond painting. If I remember, I'll show you guys a clip of what it looks like. I'm making little hand mirrors. I don't know what for, so, but I'm making those. So yeah, I'm going to listen to a little bit of that, try to get up to the next episode of Pub Dates and listen to a little bit of that, and then I will be back when I have read maybe like a hundred more pages so yeah I mean 50 more pages so I'll give you guys that update when I can but so far I'm really really enjoying it I like cozy fantasy where there is a plot element to it so the case in fact like our main character ha there's someone looking for someone or looking for their daughter really like is gonna keep me reading so I'm gonna be back when I have a little bit more to tell you and I'll talk to you guys soon oh it's also time check it's like 1:28. so let's see when I come back how late it is um, so yeah, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. I'm back. It's Wednesday. Wednesday is definitely going to be my most busiest day because I have a bunch of stuff to do on Wednesdays. I go and I get my hair done. I'm also going to do a yoga class on Wednesdays, which is my my more impactful, like my intense workout. So I'm going to do that. But I did want to say that I did wind up getting up to page 215 in A Teller of Small Fortunes. I'm really loving this book. Like, I'm having such a fun time with it. It is cozy fantasy, but there definitely is, like, elements to the story that I think are more hard-hitting. Our main character does deal with a lot of, like, prejudice about herself throughout this. There's also a lot about her being a fortune teller which is very interesting and compelling also all the side characters are really really fun there is also unexpected twists and turns in this story that i am really liking and the other element that's really is one of our main characters the, his daughter went missing at the start of the story so the book started with the um i think what is her name her name's tao and she wound up giving him a fortune that says you will see your daughter and you will give her something so they're kind of kind of teaming up to find his little girl um and there's a couple of other people that join their quest i'm really having a fun time it's really really fun and I'm, there's a cat involved there's a lot of fun side characters and i'm just having a fun moment like it's not like i wouldn't say this book is like romantic heavy a lot of the cozy fantasies i read have a very very strong like romance plot i'm not getting that but if you like a like a group of people that are kind of forced to work together or team up. It's very, very, very fun. There is also baking in here. So if one of the characters is a baker. So I'm just having a fun time. So I'm going to go read to page two. I'm going to try to read to like 75% and then I'll give you guys an update. And I think what I'm going to do today is I think I'm going to try to read like just watch, watch more of my YouTube videos because I'm so far behind. I'm like 200 videos behind and I really just want to read today and just not really think about anything. So that's my plan. I'm going to go do this. If the baby puppy wants to go for a walk, I will take her for a walk. I do not know if she's going to want to because it's very, very hot. But yeah, I will see you when I'm like 75% into this. I'll be back soon. Bye. Dragons, I'm back. I just want to do a quick update. It is, I did take the puppy for a walk. I listened to a little bit more of Isles of the Gods, which is still one of my favorite books. So I'm really enjoying my reread. Um, I'm rereading it because Amy Kaufman is doing a reread on her podcast, and I want to listen to that before I start Heart of the World soon. Um, but I did wind up getting up to page 
257 in a teller of small fortunes i'm really enjoying this book i also think i said previously that one of the characters was a bard he is he, he's a thief he's a former thief and there was a very like devastating moment in the middle of this book that really saw where they are and i think this book really is about found family there is four characters that are kind of forced to work together and i will say there are some subtle subplots which i think is keeping me interested our main character is has it um she's an immigrant fortune teller which says she does does deal with a lot of prejudice um and then there is also the mystery about her being a fortune teller um as that kind of goes to the story and there's also the mystery of one of the men his daughter has gone missing and they're trying to find her um but i'm having a really fun time with it i read about i have like about literally probably like about a I think a little bit more than 50 pages left so I'm gonna tackle the rest of this I am still watching the boys but what I think I'm gonna do until I finish this book is read a chapter and then watch a little bit of the boys because I really my my YouTube queue is out of control that is a problem when you have so many creators that you like and you just want to follow them but I also want to watch a TV show this summer and not just watch my YouTube queue because that will be not boring but I do want to catch up I have a lot of stuff that I didn't watch in the past year so I want to catch up so yeah I am gonna go read the last like i don't know the last like 60 pages of this and then i'll give you guys an update and then we're gonna roll again for britney's game i'm really excited um and yeah i'll talk to you guys soon bye the dragons i'm back i did want to say that i did wind up finishing the teller of small fortunes by julie leong I love this book. I gave this book five stars. I thought this was really, really fun. I think this book was really unique, and I feel like for a cozy fantasy, like I always say this, I love the vibes of a cozy fantasy, but I also like when there's a plot, and this book did have a lot of plot elements kind of woven in, especially connected to Tao's character, but also there was like a lot of other subplots, especially because you did have um, four to five main characters, which I really liked. I thought the ending was just so cute. It may have brought a few tears to my eyes. So I gave this book five stars. All right, so we are still gonna, we're still playing Britney's game. Gave this book five stars. I didn't wind up listening to any more Vials of the Gods, but I do want to roll again and kind of see where we are. I don't know if someone's doing sprints tonight, but I did wind up making a little bit of progress on the boys. Not a ton, but a little bit. But, oh my god, these things keep falling. All right, let me show you the board first. Okay. So we all remember where we are. Um, all right, and then let me, sorry, no, this is not working. All right, so now let me show you, okay, we're going to roll, okay, two, all right, okay, so we're here. Did I, like, really? Alright, I think I did this the wrong way. Okay, so now I don't know. We go this way. Okay. Okay. I think I did this game wrong. But you know what? We're just going to do that. One, two. Okay, so I started here. I think I did this game wrong. That's okay. You know what? We're just going to make it work. Because no one really cares. Um, okay, so I'm here... So I have to do a donut space, and I will try to make myself a little, I don't even know if I have a pen, I thought I did, oh I did. Alright, so let me just, I definitely did, I definitely did this game wrong, but that's okay. Alright, let me just put a little dot there so I know where I'm at, and uh, yeah. Okay, so, let's see, donut space, okay. Alright, and yes. And again, I'm trying, I'm picking books from my ALA TBR because that is where I, what I'm in the mood to read. Oh, this one's good. Read a book set in the U.S. Okay, so Boston Cream, read a book set in the U.S. I can do that, which makes me think it's probably not going to be a fan, it's probably not going to be a fantasy, but that's okay. All right, so read a book set in the U.S. Let me go look on my immediate TBR and let me go to my bigger TBR because I have a lot of books, so there will be one set in the U.S. I would love a fantasy, um, but we will see what gets chosen. All right, I'll be back. All right, so I'm going to choose this because on the back, it does say Colorado High School. 
So I'm going to read The Lies We Conjure by Sarah Hennen. This is another one of those books that I really wanted to read. Like it's been high on my anticipated TBR. It's Sarah Henning. It's a standalone supernatural thriller for fans of Knives Out and The Inheritance Gaze, which I love. So I'm really excited. This was one of those books that I went into the convention kind of hoping I would get to read. It's also not that long so my goal is to read this next it does say on the back it's set in colorado so i'm gonna count that for us it may like i don't know if it's like a portal fantasy but yeah it's 13 witches a lock a lock room murder and two non-magical systems trapped in a deadly game of clue so yeah again there's like a lot of clue in my life this year i've read a lot of clue theme books i was in a clue race readathon last year i did a version of clue for my show so all right, I'm going to pick up Lies We Conjure. I'm going to try to read about 50... I'm going to try to read part one. So I'm going to try to read part one, The Party, just so I feel like I can have something to talk to you guys all about. But yeah, stay alone. This was, a five, this was five stars. I have really high hopes. I've liked everything that Sarah Hennon has written, so I'm really excited. All right, we're going to dive into Lies, the, the Lies We Conjure, and then I'll give you guys an update. Bye. Hey friends, I'm back. Sorry, I just want to give you a quick update. It is about almost 2.30 and I did wind up, between today, I wound up watching a little bit of The Boys. I'm almost done with season one. I caught up, well, not fully caught up because I still have a lot to go, but I wound up watching a little, watching a little bit more of my YouTube videos, so I'm caught up and I wound up reading a hundred pages of The Lies We Conjure by Sarah Henning. I'm really having a fun time with this book. It basically is Knives Out meets The Inheritance Game with a supernatural element to it and I'm having a super fun time. I love the inheritance game so it's very very fun that this is kind of what the book is but it's one of those premises that if I was ever in the situation I would just pass out from shock and fear so I think it's just like funny that we have it. Sorry my dog is barking because she does not know what she wants to do and I am not she, she, she's fine she's just barking but we followed two characters Ruby and her sister Ren and they're working at a Ren renaissance fair. Um, that they're, they're working at. And this woman kind of comes over to them and says, hey, you guys have a, you know, a fake British accent. That's the Renaissance Fair. Um, you kind of look like my former granddaughters or my granddaughters that are, like, not here. Can you come and pretend, pretend to be my granddaughters for a night? And they say, okay, you'll give them money. And they're both kind of in a bit of a financial strait. Um, it takes place in Colorado, so that's why I'm talking about it right now because I had to read books set in the USA. Um, and they wound up going to this mansion, and the woman that they're with runs away, escapes as a murder is committed, and they're kind of trapped in this house with a set of witches. They're not witches. They're not in this family. And right now, they realize that things are not going according to plan. So you follow two, I think it's two point of views. You follow Ruby, who was one of the girls pretending to be, um, the sisters, and then you follow Auden, who is... His, it's his grandmother that was murdered. Uh, my memory card was full, and I didn't realize that. So, um, but I'm really having a fun time with this. I like the supernatural elements. I love witches. I think that this would be a great fall read. And I really do like that you're kind of in this family that these characters really have no idea about. The only thing that these two sisters know is that they're pretending to be these rich people but they really have no idea they didn't even think they were witches until they set foot into this house and then you also have the other point of view character Auden who's very very familiar with this world so I really like that I think it's a very good way to expand the world and I'm having a really really fun time with it so I'm gonna go back to read this I'm also watching sprints with Brittany Loves Reading um and yeah that is my plan I also do want to do a little bit of diamond painting at some point so I can make my way through Isles of the Gods. The reason I'm re-listening re to Isles of the Gods, which is definitely my favorite book, I love this book, it's so, so good, is because I got E.R.C. a part of the world, and also Amy Kaufman and Kate J. Armstrong are doing rereads of their books, because their second books are coming out relatively soon. And I am so far behind on my podcast. I am, like, behind on every single podcast that I have. But... <sighs> Some, some of the podcasts I listen to, I need to watch or do things. So, like, I want to be sure that I'm caught up. So, yeah, the next time you see me, I will have update. I will have got up to page 200 in this book. The Secret Girl is always is to finish this book today so I could get my UFO for Buckymon. But I don't know if that's going to happen today. I'm probably going to have to plan that a little bit better. One day this, one day this summer, I will do that. I will pick a book that has an audio and I will just 
devour it and read it in one day which will be an entertaining for sure so i'll be back when i have about 100 more pages read i will probably talk a little bit about isles of the gods when at the end i do not know what vlog i was gonna put it in but it really has nothing to do with this vlog i'm just reading it in background so i can make a catch up on my podcast but yeah i'm gonna go back to read this see if the puppy's okay it's also so hot i wish it was like a little bit cooler and i love hot but i want a little bit cooler so i can actually take her for a walk because she does love a walk but right now i just think it's too hot for her little paws so all right i'll be back when i have got to 100 more pages of this and we'll do like just like what am i doing updates so i'll talk to you guys soon I'm back. I just want to do a quick update. I did want to finishing Isles of the Gods. I was reading that camp TBR where you had to read water on the cover, but also I just really wanted to reread it and I was following along with Pub Date, which is a podcast hosted by the author. So I did finish that. I gave that book five stars, really enjoyed it. And then I got up to part three in The Lies We Conjure by Sarah Henning. We just finished the chapter call. The, we're, we're about to head into the lies. So basically, I'm really liking this book. It's very, very unique and very, very different. You basically follow these two characters that are thrust into this situation that they really don't understand. Um, and they're basically trapped in this mansion of witches because they were kind of instructed to be like pretend to be the people in this family. And then when they got there, the person they were with, the grandmother character, left them and there's a murder and they're kind of suspects. I really like it. I think it's a very interesting way to tell a story. It's definitely paranormal. There are elements of witchcraft and there are a lot of different lines. It's very interesting because the characters don't understand the magic system at all. Like they are very, very new. So I feel like the way that Sarah Henning is giving you the information is very, very readable, very, very digestible. Um, and I guess like I'm, I'm really having a fun time with it. I like the main characters. We have two main point of views. We have Auden, who is the one of the, his grandmother was murdered. And then we have... Oh, what is her name? I think it's Ruby and Ren, but they're called like they have adopted like Ruby and Ren. Those are the those are the characters named in the story, and they're kind of trying to figure out what happens. And now they're trying to uncover what happened to this woman that was murdered. Like, how did she get murdered? And also trying to f uncover these relics. And I'm having a fun time with it. Um, I'm also just finished Isles of the Gods, so I may take a bit of a physical reading break because I'm have a bit of a headache and do some diamond painting and listen to my audiobook of Nightbirds by KJ Armstrong which is also coming out relatively soon. I got an arc of Firebirds but I might just read a bit more. So I'm on page 176 and part two goes up to 283 which is basically a hundred more pages. So I think I'm going to read a little bit more of this. I am really having a fun time. I really have liked all of Sarah Henning's book that I've read. And I'm, I'm, I'm liking this one quite a bit. I think it's a very... I think that supernatural thrillers are going to become very popular. Just the way that I've been seeing a lot of books are pitched as that. But I'm having a fun time. I like the characters. I wish we would get the other sister's point of view. And I wish we would get a couple of other characters' point of view. Because we do have so many characters in the story. That I feel like I wish we got more point of view characters other than just Ruby and Auden. But that's okay. So I'm going to go back to reading and I will give you guys an update when I can. Probably when I get like another 100 pages in. I'm also on sprints with Leandra and Brittany from Brittany Loves Reading. Um, and I'm also finally watching me and Brittany's collab video. Which is fun. I always, I, I'm so far behind on book two. But I'm trying to do that. And I think I'm going to take a TV show break today. And try to get my YouTube queue under 150 videos. I do that every once in a while. Especially because I have been gone and I've been adventuring. But yeah, my goal for today is to make it most of the way through this because we're supposed to get our prompts for next week for Leandra. Um, and yeah, so that's my plans. So I'm going to go back to reading. I'm going to go read a bit more and I'll give you guys an update when I get to part four, which is called The Truth. So the next section I'm about to quote is called The Lies. So we'll see where we go. But I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Hey, like dragons. I'm back. I just want to do a quick update. Sorry, my dog is barking in the background because no one's home but me and she thinks I'm talking to someone that is here but it's not but I did want to say that I did wind up getting up to page 290 basically ah there's my German Shepherd say hi hi camera she can't even see her she's over here um but I did want to say that I wind up getting up to 290 in the lies that we conjure by Sarah Henning I am enjoying this book again this is a 300 page 400 page book sorry it's like just 400 pages and I think what I'm struggling with is just the pacing of this story. We have a lot of side characters in this story because it is basically Clue 
but we're really only getting two point of views. So I feel like because of that, we're not getting all the information. And I think that like it's going to make more sense why that's happening in like this last section that's called the truth. So I'm intrigued to see about that. Um, it's definitely not what I thought it was going to be. But I feel like for a supernatural thriller world building wise, I don't think the magic is as explained as I was hoping. But again, I'm saying that because our, one of our main characters does, you know, they're not witches. Like, they don't have that knowledge yet. So I think it's just interesting because they're really not thinking it as witch like Auden is. Cassie, stop. But there are a lot of secrets that are being kept from us as the reader, and I do want to keep reading, which is really, really good. I'm curious. Like, I don't know if it's going to be... Cassie, stop. Sorry, she's barking at me. Cass, I'm doing something. Uh, but I'm intrigued. I definitely want to keep reading, so my goal is to take her out, make sure she's okay. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm curious. There was a big twist at the end of this chapter, so I'm curious to see what happens next. But kind of going back to like that first chapter my question is why were these two random girls chosen by this person to go to this mansion like what was that reasoning and it could go of one of two ways it could go a way where like it's very very predictable or it could go an unpredictable way so I'm curious which way it goes so I'm very curious so I'm gonna go probably read the last like 100 pages of this book and then I'll give you guys an update and then we might just start a new vlog. I don't know. Um, but yeah. So I will talk to you guys soon. But I am enjoying it. I think right now it's probably like a four and a half, like a four star read. The last little bit may totally change the book. But also another problem I'm encountering is that I just don't feel that connected to the characters. And I think that's because there are so many and we only have two point of view characters. So even those characters, I feel like a little bit disconnected from. Um, like I like Ruby and I like her sister, but I just don't feel that connected to them. So like I like Auden, I just don't feel that connected to him. So like that's like really what I'm feeling. I feel like, you know, I remember when I read The Inheritance Games, I instantly felt connected to all of those characters. When I read other Sarah Henning books, like I felt connected to all the characters. These characters I'm almost at like a little bit of a distance from. But I don't know how the book's going to end, which is really, really good. Sometimes when I read those, I'm like, obvious. So I'm curious to see where the story goes. So I'm going to go keep reading. And when I have an update for you, I'll give it to you. Um, if my headache gets a little bit worse, I might decide to listen to my audiobook and just diamond paint for a little bit. But we will see. But really, I would like to finish this so I could start the weekend strong with a new book. Um, I'm also not watching anything. I took the day off from watching just to try to catch up on my YouTube queue. Right now I'm watching Danny Dabbles. I'll try to link her below if I can remember. But yeah, I will talk to you guys soon when I have another update. Um, but so far it's a four star read for me. And I think that that's probably going to be where it lands unless this last like bit changes, which it could. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Hey friends, I'm back. I'm trying to get this to be a bit of a better angle for you all so I'm not like in the camera. But I did want to say that I did find up finishing the lies that we conjure literally like a couple of seconds ago. And I'm going to give this book four stars for review. I think that it was a really, really fun book. If you're looking for kind of a unique thriller that definitely does have supernatural elements to it, definitely witchy vibes. I definitely picked this one up. I think that because this was a 400 page book, I think it needed to be that long. However, I think because it only had two point of view characters, I felt really disconnected from all the characters. Like as we got to the end of like the end of Ma and like all of like the, you know, the reveals as Clue tends to do, I felt like I didn't know who anyone was. I really liked our two main characters, like I liked our two point of view characters, but everyone else felt a little bit surface level and the world building just did not hit. Like, I still feel like the world building was a bit too not as fleshed out as I would like. So I'm going to give this book four stars for review. But I had a really fun time with it. I like the concept. I think that it's a good pitch. Knives Out meets the Inheritance Games. Like, I had a fun time with it. It just is not going to be a new favorite. So I definitely did this game wrong. So, so sorry, Brittany. But we're going to try to fix it. And we're going to try to finish the board for Timmy's and... Worst comes to worst, this will be my second to last thing because I definitely do want to finish the board. 
even though I did this totally wrong, but that's okay. So we're just going to hope that it works. I'm going to show you guys my little dice. Oh no. Okay, fine. Let me get down to roll. One, one, one. Sorry. I, I, I literally had dice. Three. Okay. So one, two, three. Okay. So we are going to go here. Okay. Which means I'm probably going to have to do one more dice to get to our, um, all right. So I'm right here. So one, two, three, I'm going to go there. All right. So I'm going to go right there. And if, you know, things don't work out, I'm probably going to have to read one more book to finish the board. But I also did this game totally wrong, so. But my last book will be a mood read, which makes me think I can just count the audiobook I'm going to listen to for my mood read. But if I pick something super short, I might just, like, do that as well. So let me, yeah, I don't even know where my other little things went. I had them. All right, well, I have to hope that I don't have to... Oh, they're right here. Yeah, okay. Those are my Pradona spaces. Okay, so let me see which one I'm going to pick. And again, I'm trying to focus on my ALA books. There are a couple of projects I do have in the works that, like, could work for this, but I'm trying to make this be one blog, so... Ooh, read a book club book or a mandatory read. Well... My only really mandatory read would be Mira of the Beast by Alexandra Bracken. I don't really have a mand. I mean, I do have a mandatory read, but it's for a different vlog. Uh, all right. I don't really have a mandatory read. I guess I do for that. But if I read that, it's going to be quite hefty. All right, let me let me just pick another card and see. Cause if I do have to read that, I will. You can't go out that way. Read a book with rocks the on the cover. All right, you know what? I'm gonna pick up Mirror of the Beast and see how I feel. It is like a mandatory read because I am on a blog tour for it, and I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit all those books in that vlog. So I'm gonna go pick up Mirror of the Beast. I'm gonna read 50 pages. This is the sequel to Silver and the Bone by Alex Bracken and I remember getting to the end of that book and wanting to know what happens next so I think I'm gonna pick that book up that book was also at ALA but they were not dropping arcs because it came out too soon so I got approved for a blog tour for that book so what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm going to start I think I'm gonna start Mirror of the Beast and see how I'm feeling and then if I get to the point where it's not going to work for this vlog or right now or I feel like I need to reread Silver and the Bone which I could do I will come back and chat with you guys but I'm going to start that book and read about 50 pages and see how I'm feeling and if worse comes to worse I will pick another mandatory read but that's really the only book that's like a true mandatory read because I'm not doing any book clubs because, uh, well, I also have the Tainted Cup, but that's a mandatory read for later in the week. All right, you know what? I'm going to pick that book up so that I feel like I'm not as stressed for that. So I'm going to go read the first 50 pages of that or the first 100 pages, the, the first 25% of that book, and then I'll give you guys an update. Bye. I had to make a decision. I think I'm going to pick up Impossible Creatures by Katherine Rundell because I do have an e-arc of this that I can't read, like, on my Kindle. So I'm happy I got a copy. It's coming out in September. It's very animal themed and it follows two characters that kind of have to save the day. They're kind of forced to team up. It is pretty big print. So I think I'm going to pick this one up and um, listen to Nightbirds as I'm like running errands. I definitely have to read part one today which is not that long but these chapters are a bit long so yeah that's what i think i'm gonna do i'm also my goal for today is to finish um season one of the boys because then i want to move on to harlots later um i didn't make that much progress last night on tv but i want to actually watch tv today so yeah my goal is to read this um my goal is to get up to page like i guess like 100 yeah because these chapters are not that long get up to page 100 
Um, I'll probably get up to page like 128 for you and then give you guys an update. But I'm happy I got this one. This is definitely one of those books that will just go into my classroom. So I'm happy I'm reading some middle grade because that's really what the, well, some books at the convention were born. Um, so yeah, just know that I am listening to Nightbirds and you guys will see that in my wrap up, but I just am so far behind on podcasts and I know if I don't catch up like now, I'm never going to catch up. So yeah, I'm going to go read Impossible Creatures um, and I'll give you guys an update when I write about 128 pages. And it is also Saturday, which means this is coming to the end of this. And in theory, I could probably finish this book today if I really, really tried. So yeah. Sorry if I did this whole game out of order. Someone's probably going to watch this vlog and be like, oh my god, you did the whole game wrong. I know. It happens. But it was really, really fun. So I'm going to go read about 128 pages of this and then I'll give you guys an update. Bye. Hey, book dragons. I am back. So it's actually like almost 7 o'clock. It's just 7. I'm really struggling with this book. I'm really struggling with impossible creatures. And I think it's because I'm physically reading it. I think I had this problem when I read Good Thieves. I felt like the writing style felt like so disjointed to me. And I want to like this book. Like, I really, really do because she's such a popular middle grade author. I like the characters, but the writing style right now, I just feel like I'm a little bit, like, disjointed. Like, I don't feel like I'm absolutely captured by the story. So I think I'm going to put this down. I think I'm going to end this vlog because I'll be honest with you. I am so sorry, Brittany. I think I played your game, like, completely wrong. But I had a really, really fun time. I was able to finish two full books and listening to a full audiobook. So that's pretty good. I'm trying to really like let myself just have fun this summer and read sort of what I want. So I am going to DNF this for the moment. And I may, this might actually be a perfect book to read like the first week of school when I head back to work because I'm reading it at like that point. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to DNF this for the moment. I'm going to come back to it when I'm working. But I did want to do a little bit of a recap. Um, I did wind up reading um, a few books in this vlog. I read Small Tales of Fortune. Was that in this vlog? I don't even know what's in this vlog because it's been so long. Um, but yeah, I read a few things in this vlog. I definitely read um, a lot of uh, this the Sarah Hennon book, I read that. I gave that one four stars. This I DNF'd. I finished reading Isles of the Gods sort of in the background. Um, and yeah, I had a really, really fun time. So thank you so much, Brittany, for hosting. I think when you watch this vlog, Brittany, you will see. I probably played your game wrong, so I do apologize. But I had a super fun time. I'm going to go prep for my next vlog for Leandra for Camp TBR, so I know that. But thank you guys for watching, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.